Life Audio. Just ahead on encouragement for you, longtime Chick fil A CEO Dan Cathy talks lessons in leadership and Christian life coach Rodney Love on dealing with stress. Welcome to the Encouragement for You podcast, brought to you by Encouragement Communications in association with the Salem Web Network and is part of the Life Audio Faith Toolkit series. For more inspirational, faith affirming podcasts, visit lifeaudio.com. In just a moment, your host, Don Hawkins, will introduce today's episode. First, a word from our sponsors. Many books have been written on the subject of leadership, but few people have applied leadership principles the way Dan Cathy did during the years he served as CEO of Chick-fil-A. In our first segment, Dan and host Don Hawkins discuss lessons in leadership. We can't do leadership or really do anything apart from uh, the power of God and the Word of God, can we? Well, that's exactly right. You know, and, and surprising. Don, that we often see uh, in the headlines what happens in people's private lives becomes very public. Um, we think that we can live a life that's uh, uh, in the shadows or we can have uh, activities that are going on that escape the eye of some observer, some casual observer in some way. But the truth of the matter is really our lives are much more public than we, we sometimes would like to think. And as we see public figures, uh, and, and sometimes we have a little glimpse behind the curtain, we're really disappointed. Dan, in light of that, uh, where would you rank integrity on the scale of attributes that a person needs uh, to exercise leadership? Well, I think about integrity, Don, as a balanced life in, in all the, the values that, uh, that we need to have built in, into our life. It, it's, a, it's a word of completeness. It, it really refers even to the engineering of a superstructure bridge that spans from one one side of a, of a river or a lake to the other side. It, it's it's complete. It has strength. And I, uh, I the exemplary model for me, to be quite honest with you, is my own dad, Fruit Kathy, that started Chick-fil-A. And here's why, Don. My dad, as I got older and we we went to church, my dad was the same guy at church as he was at home. And then as I got even older still and working in our little family restaurant called the Dwarf House, uh, he was the same dad there that he was at home. He was the same person regardless of the circumstances or who he was with. He would unashamedly even mention God's name and make appropriate references to God even in the marketplace. And that's one of the reasons that it's so easy for me today is that I saw and had such an incredible exemplary model from him uh, since I was just a child. Dan, your dad uh, uh, has been such a testimony to all of us, to so many of us over the years. And uh, we think of Truett Cathy as a man who worked hard, uh, a man who started an organization that's committed to Christian values, uh, a man who's written books, um, those kinds of things. Uh, but your dad is also a very humble man. And, and uh, to me, one of the traits of integrity, and I recall sitting uh, with your dad on the front row of a uh, uh, rally that we were having here at Southeastern Bible College a number of years ago. And uh, just in conversation with your dad, uh, you know, there were a number of things that struck me, but perhaps the thing that struck me the most uh, was his humility. And I was thinking of that in the context of uh, Dr. Billy Graham. And I was thinking about uh, the humility that he had. And your dad and, and Billy Graham are two men who've had great impacts on a lot of people. And I know you know uh, uh, Mr. Graham very well as well. Uh, but uh, humility has has played a role in their leadership. Uh, talk well, about it, that. Well, it, humility really speaks to our willing to have a teachable spirit where we're willing to learn. And it seems to be a characteristic that for those that want to learn from others, have an interest in others, are others-focused versus being egotistical. I heard someone say that ego is an acronym for edging God out, E-G-O, hmm. edging God out. And when we edge God out, we, get, we can get very egotistical. We get self-focused on our own agenda. We don't listen to others as we should. And 
This can happen in business. The tendency to become prideful or arrogant and how that can can seep into the the psychic and the culture of successful businesses. And they lose that sense of humility, as we're referring to, and they quit learning. Uh, they don't listen to customers. They don't listen to other people within the industry. They're not at the top of their game. They get complacent, and, and that gives way to other competitors to come in when they could have sustained their competitive advantage over a long period of time. Uh, I, I think you hit on, on something that's absolutely crucial. And, and whether we're in a leadership role in a business or whether we're in a leadership role in a home or whatever, uh, complacency and arrogance can certainly uh, get in the way of our becoming the kind of leaders that God wants us to be. And we don't have followers at that point. It's I heard an interesting comment, Don, that uh, really has been inspirational to me just in the last couple of weeks. It said that Leaders don't produce followers. You know, that really caught my eye because we mm. typically think that, you know, leadership is all about having followers. And you, 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 the, the better leader you are, the more followers you have. But that was not at all the insight that someone shared with me. He said leaders produce leaders. Mm. You know, the great legacy leaders don't produce followers. They, they produce and develop other leaders. And mm. certainly Jesus is the consummate example in every area of life, and including leadership, where he he poured into a small group of men his life, and by pouring himself into them, he produced leaders that later transformed uh, our world. And Dan, if there's any place uh, where uh, leadership, the right kind of leadership is needed, and it's in the home, and it's not usually the kind of leadership that that a lot of people think of it as. It's certainly true, and, and it's leadership on the behalf, number one, of, of husbands having a right relationship with their spouse, mm-hmm. their wife, and, and then that influence of those values being modeled out, not taught, but caught as uh, as young little children begin to observe how mommy and daddy interact and the the uh watching a dad ask for his wife's uh, apology to, to a repentant a repentant attitude begins to build that value of uh of humility that we're talking about earlier. Uh, Dan, you mentioned to me that there is an area of leadership uh, that is often neglected, and that is the area of vision. Uh, help us see the connection between those two. Yeah, I, I sometimes said that um, you know, the difference between management and leadership really gets into this area of, of vision. Leaders need to be able to point the way. They need to take people to places they've never been before. And that, to me, is so exciting. I love to take people physically to places they've never been before, but I also like to take people to places mentally or even emotionally they've never been before. And it relates to the subject of vision. I love a definition that comes from Bill Hybels, who uh, said this, that vision is a picture of the future that produces passion in you. There's a lot of P's there, of course, in that definition. <laughs> well, you'd expect that from a preacher. He'd alliterate yeah. it all the way through. Yeah, but as, when, if you're influencing others, and, and let's be clear, that's, that's when we're talking about leadership, it's not necessarily a title of, you know, president of this or vice president of that. It's um, anybody that's influencing others, and everybody, if you, if you think about it, is influencing, has some little eyes or or a number of eyes that, that are looking to you, that are watching your behavior and your influence in their behavior. Mm. We need to be able to take people to a place that they've never been before. Vision is a picture that is in the leader's mind that is so clear they can, it's in living color. It's a picture of the future that emotionally moves and stirs your heart in a unique way, so much so that Maybe water comes to your eyes, you know, a lump comes up in your throat, and you can hardly speak that it's so, uh, it means so much to you. Mm. And I think when that happens, that's a good indication that God's Holy Spirit is working in a person's life uh, in a very powerful way. Vision is not just a picture of the future, but get this done. Vision also uh, has to do with peripheral vision. Hmm. I heard uh, Yoel Levy from the Atlanta Symphony talk about the importance of peripheral vision, who uh, said he wanted musicians in the trumpet section that also heard what was going on behind them with the timpani, Hmm. and that uh, they could hear the oboe solos and the violins, and he could not only read the music, but watch the conductor. So we, we want musicians at the Atlanta Symphony that have great peripheral vision. Business leaders need to be 
looking across into other industries to see what's going on in hotel management and what's going on in education, what's going on in government. With Even in our business, we look to other businesses, hotel chains and others that have given us really great insights yeah. uh, other than just within our own industry. And then get this, it's not only vision, it's forward thinking. It's not only about looking around and having great peripheral vision, but Henry Kissinger said that we all need a great sense of historical vision. We need to remember where we came from, understand the mistakes that have been made in the past so we're not so subject to repeat them often. It led me to actually teach corporate history at Chick-fil-A, what I call vision and values class. That's an all-day, seven-hour class, and I teach the history of our business. Organizations need to tell their story, as we sometimes Mm. say today, that story needs to be told again and again. So the the idea here is that vision is about teaching and instructing and directing about the future. It's about looking side to side like a good motorcycle driver does. (laughs) We'll be back with more after a brief word from our sponsors. And don't forget to listen for Dawn's live weekend talk show, Encouragement Live, Heard Saturdays at 7.05 p.m. Central Time on American Family Radio and other radio stations around the country, as well as on the worshipchannel.org. Most of us would agree that life today is stressful, and certified Christian life coach Rodney Love has helped many stressed out individuals. In our next segment, he and host Don Hawkins offer solutions for dealing with stress. Uh, Rodney, first of all, um, you uh, have founded and are president and CEO of the Hearts of Love International Ministry. Tell us about the ministry and uh, how you came to get this ministry going. Hearts of Love, Don, is a solution-based ministry. And as we look at the challenges that are before us out there, we knew there had to be, we had to create solutions for it. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32 says, The sons of Issachar had an understanding of the times and knew what to do. You can look at solution based this way. There's a difference between a short-term fix and a long-term solution. For example, you put a pretty Band-Aid on a broken arm. That Band-Aid looks real pretty. But you know what? It's mm. not a solution. It no. doesn't fix that broken arm. No. People are under a lot of stress. And we wanted to have a solution for them for the stress they might be under. Yeah. And so that's where Hearts of Love wants to come along and be a solution and serve people, not only in this country, but around the world with the stresses they might be dealing with. Uh, Rodney, uh, let's take a look at what Scripture may give us in terms of uh, laying a foundation for a solution-based approach, a, uh, an approach that doesn't just put a Band-Aid on a broken arm, as you put it so graphically, but actually deals with the underlying issues. Well, Don, one of the scriptures that comes to mind is 2 Timothy 1.7. It says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. And that scripture is so interesting when you think about the different stresses that we can have this year. For example, the finances. Maybe we have a member overseas that is in the military, and that member of the family is overseas somewhere in harm's way, and of course we need to be praying for those men and women, but... And also just in things we're dealing with, like we said, we could be having health issues. We could be having a feeling of hopelessness, hopelessness or despair or just being down. Yeah. And again, you know, God has not given us that spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. And there's just scripture after scripture throughout the Bible of encouragement and just of help wherever you might be. A verse that I would like to share that I think ties in very well. This is one of Frank's favorites and one of mine. Uh, Nahum 1 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in trouble, and he knows them who trust in him. Uh, so good to know that God's goodness is there for us, even during hard times, that he is that stronghold when we go through those times of trouble, and uh, we can trust in him. Uh, for those well, Don, of you. That's who, an excellent one. That is yeah. a great verse. Oh, uh, it's one of, one of those that I've come to love. And, Rodney, I know that uh, one of the things that you have developed. Uh, and you've done this actually in concert with Dr. Minrith, uh, is a program, solution-based program that uh, actually helps people uh, to take time out from the stresses and challenges of life. That is so true. Um, uh, as Dr. Minrith uh, is the best at it, 
one of the things that we look at, and we're talking about Scripture, Don, is just to memorize Scripture. It's just to take time and read your read the Word and just to take time to look at the Lord, what it says, and to memorize the Scripture. Another thing is to get exercise. It's just to be out there and uh, get your body physically in shape and exercising. And then another thing you do is just to uh, set goals. You write goals down. You know, you tend to fill those goals. Those are all good things to do to, you know, if you're down or depressed or lonely, just get out and go to something that will remind you and show you what the Lord has done and done for all of us. Yeah. Maybe you need to refocus mentally. Maybe you need to refocus spiritually. Maybe you need to just do, you know, refocus as far as all of it, mentally, spiritually, physically. Let's go to the phones. We'll take some phone calls right now. And our first call is from William, listening in Jonesboro, Georgia. William, we're glad you've called us. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you doing? We're well, Hi, thank William. you. William, how you doing tonight? Thanks I am so blessed. It is so wonderful to be able to call you. Um, I am dealing with a lot of issues. Um, being away from my kids, I am in a marriage, um, another marriage. And me and my wife, we've been married about 10 years now, my second marriage. But my first marriage, I have kids through. And it's just so hard, you know, broken that I can't spend time with my kids during this time. And and it's affecting my marriage in a way, too. Now, my present wife has begun to withdraw from me. And it has really wounded my heart to to see her pull away from me Mm. and that it has got me at a point to where I'm on the edge. I, I have extended all hope earthly, and I have begun to pray, read my Bible, and just trust God right now because I don't want to be hurting like this during this time because you're right. You're supposed to be joyful. You're supposed to be loving and kind with one another. But to have someone who who doesn't say to you that they love you, they need you, they appreciate you. It is a hurting thing. And we've been married for years now. And it just seems like she is just drifting away from me. And on top of that, during this time, being without my kids has caused me to feel even more sadder. So whatever encouragement, whatever prayer you guys have, open to it, and I just want to say to someone out there, you know, I need help. I need someone that I can talk to who can be there for me and encourage me along this way. Boy, William, we just so appreciate your openness and and your willingness to share the pain of uh, how things have gone in this marriage relationship and how sad you feel about that. And let's talk to Rodney Love about what you're going through. Rodney, I know you have some encouragement for us to share with William. William, thank you so much for calling. I just appreciate you taking just being bold and stepping up and calling and just sharing what's going on in your life. That is so special. And I just want to sit here and just uh, pray for you now. But first, I just want to encourage you. Thank you. You know, you're reading your Bible. You're in prayer. You're you're being the man of God that you need to be. You're keeping your eyes focused on Him and. And that is so important. And you're loving your kids, you're loving your wife, and the way, you know, and just, uh, but I just want to pray for you right now, okay? Yes. Uh, Father, I do thank you for him. I thank you for him calling. And Father, be with him over in Jonesboro, right out of Atlanta. And Father, if he's dealing with challenges, Father, I pray that you would put your hand upon him in a very special way, that you would put your hand upon the family in a special way, that you'd bring them back together. Father, I just pray that you would just, be working in William's life. Thank you, Lord, that he is focused on you, that he is reading his Bible, that he is praying, and he is seeking you about how to be the, the perfect father and husband, even though there's challenges there. 
So, Father, I pray you guide him and direct him every step of the way. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And, William, we are so glad that you have called us and given us an opportunity to uh, be of encouragement to you. One of the things I want to encourage you to do is to make sure that you have a network of people supporting you offering you encouragement, people that you can be of an encouragement to them. And and that's the second piece of the, the puzzle that I would share with you. As we give out encouragement to other people, I believe God encourages us. And one of the reasons that uh, he lets us get encouragement is so that we can give it. Thank you for listening to this episode of Encouragement for You with Don Hawkins host of Encouragement Live Radio and author of over 25 books, including Never Give Up and Master Discipleship Today. You can find more about Don and his books at encouragementlive.org. Encouragement for You is a production of Encouragement Communications with the Salem Web Network and lifeaudio.com. Editing by Phil Gebers, production by Elizabeth Andrade. If you enjoyed what you heard today, we'd love for you to head over to your favorite podcast app and leave us a review. It really does help people find us. Let me take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on Encouragement for You. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Stay encouraged and join us next time for encouragement for you.